we need to have a talk about something very important and i think this is to go forward into the many patches that we're going to be seeing in version 2.0 and onwards which is to not make a decision in regards to a unit that you may want which of course anyone is allowed to like who they want what they want and like the design the place so all that type of stuff that's a good thing that's the way you should be playing your account because if it's not fun in the first place you shouldn't be probably summoning on that character because you're not going to have fun you're not going to enjoy the game that's a very bad thing but the main thing I do want to talk about today is especially with the character of Black Swan because I know these two new five-star characters that are coming out are very exciting for everyone in regards to the design, the mechanics that they hold, the gameplay that they have. We have Black Swan being a dot character, which is going to be the first of its kind when it comes to being a five-star unit. Of course, we have Kafka right here in the front of the screen, who is the leader of the dot team. And she's going to be a very big topic about today's video as well. And then looking into also Sparkle, which she's going to be Harmony Quantum. That's going to be very great for a lot of the characters that are in the game, especially Mono Quantum. Quantum, Don Hung, QQ, just because she does have all of these buffs and all these really absurd things about her kit, which is giving you a seven skill point bar, which is absolutely insane. Her ultimate giving you skill points, her skill or ultimate, I don't know which one it is, giving you crit damage from the website that we have from Hoyo Lab. And we also get an advance for it. She's honestly very strong. And I will have my own video talking about that as well. So make sure to leave a sub and like and all that type of stuff if you're excited for that type of news. But going ahead and talking about Black Swan in specific, because I have seen a lot of people talk about Black Swan. And there's one common fact that I'm seeing a lot of people talk about, which is, do you need Kafka for Black Swan? And this is where I really want to talk about it in this video, because I feel like Black Swan might be the character that ruins a lot of people's accounts. And I'm mainly talking about low spenders and free-to-play players because rocking Black Swan as she is without Kafka, I think is going to be a very big mistake. And it's going to lead you down a path where you're going to be waiting a long time to be able to utilize her fully because right now we have Kafka's rerun. We all know that this came very, very fast. And it sucks a lot that Ruan may Kafka and also Black Swan came together, which all of them technically will be the best team together in all honesty with the toughness damage, with you being able to delay stuff, with you being able to have that damage output, that speed boost that Kafka and Black Swan are going to love a lot. We definitely need to talk about why I'm saying this and why Black Swan for sure is going to be a big trap for a lot of players. And to go ahead and start talking about it, of course, as I said before, Black Swan is going to be a five star dot character. The first of its kind besides Kafka when it comes to just being an overall just high damaging dot unit, while Kafka is really being the read trigger rather than doing her own damage. So this is the very cool thing. And she comes with the special dot, which is Arcana. And as we see from the live stream that we have right here, Arcana is going to be a unique type of damage over time that she is going to have herself no one else has it in the game and there's going to be special compared to all the other dots because of what it can do as the time goes on and of course seeing that arcana is a damage over time for people that don't know this or that people should you know know this about kafka is that she's able to trigger all dots as long as it's a dot she is going to immediately produce the damage from a certain percentage of what the original damage would have been so this is a thing i want to talk about in regards to kafka already whereas if you're going to be looking to get black swan i would hope that you already have kafka because the big point about Kafka and the reason why she's such a good character and a very strong character is that she is going to basically double or triple the damage that your character is going to be doing when it comes to having them on the dot team just because you don't get your damage until the enemy takes their turn. So the only way to give yourself the front loaded damage is if you're rocking Kafka and triggering those dots before the enemy gets their turn. So that way you get one re-trigger or two re-triggers or even maybe three re-triggers before they get their first initial hit. And that would have been the only hit you would have done without her. So as you can see already, that is a big problem if you don't have Kafka and you're going to be something rocking something like Black Swan. Where Black Swan is going to be waiting and waiting and waiting. All you're going to be doing is being able to stack on the Arcana stacks, which is going to make it stronger but you would have been able to trigger that dot much more faster, way many more times than if you were to have Kafka on your team. So you really want to look at your account and see what are you really building? What characters do you really have in order to be getting something like Black Swan or maybe even other characters in the future? Because I have seen the same thing with Black Swan, not Black Swan, but Sparkle, where a lot of people are like, should I be summoning for Sparkle? I already have Bronya. I already have Ruan Mei. I have Bronya as well, like separately, like only her. I only have Ruan Mei. And we have a lot of these four star characters that obviously are so freaking good that it's looking like a lot of this is coming from the fear of missing out because we have characters like Ting Yun, we have characters like Asta, we have characters like Pella, we have characters like Hanya, and these characters on their own already as four stars provide so much to the team and a lot of different aspects. 
right now a lot of people are looking at sparkle a lot of people are looking at black swan and it looks like some of you may be looking to summon on them just for the point that you want to have them on for i guess you could say fomo reasons and looking at your account if you really look at it do you really need sparkle when you have someone like ting yun who's able to support a team and give a hyper carry so much benefit from having her on the team asta with her aoe buff Pella with their AOE defense rate, Hanya with the skill point consumption, basically reducing it with having her skill on the enemy. There's a lot of different characters in the game right now that kind of suit satisfy the needs that you would use these characters for in the long run. Having something like Bronya and Ruin May at the same time, where do you put Sparkle in this unless you're trying to run a very, very dedicated team for it, like Mono Quantum, or maybe to buff up your your Don Hung, which even though Ruan May can do the same thing with being able to help that Hung out and also with the toughness damage. So is Black Swan or Sparkle really worth it for you if you have these characters already? But looking at Arcana, as you can see from the gameplay in the background, there is going to be something very important that you do need to notice, which is these Arcana stack that she ended up giving to that enemy after she used her skill. She ended up giving out four. Look at Gwenaifen and using her skill, she's going to use her skill, inflict those dots, and it adds burn, but no stacks or arcana are given to him well i'm assuming this green symbol is arcana guess what happens when kafka does her skill kafka's skill does what it reapplies or not reapplies but re-triggers the dots that wouldn't have happened in the first place until the enemy takes their t turn look at that from four stacks of arcana which i'm assuming that green symbol is arcana to six stacks now you have two more stacks from kafka and what does this mean that arcana comes from triggering dots and when those dots trigger, you do get more stacks. And as you can see, which I have to look at it real quick. Oh, they actually don't show us. I was going to see if the triggering of Arcana resets or not. But looking at Kafka right now, you can already tell from what she's able to do that when she re-triggers these dots, Black Swan gets more Arcana damage or more Arcana stacks, which I'm assuming would make the Arcana hit a lot more. And as they said in the stream as well, the more Arcana you have, the more damage you will be doing to uh, these enemies with that dot. So you already can see right now that Kafka is by far, yes, going to be needed for Black Swan. So if you're not looking to pull for Kafka, you probably shouldn't be looking to pull for Black Swan. I don't want to tell people what to not summon on, but I also don't want you to ruin your account in regards to getting the teammates or getting characters that don't have their teammates to not function properly. If you're not going to get Black Swan or if you're looking to get Black Swan and you're not looking forward to get Kafka, you are going to be running a halfly invested Black Swan at that point. A lot of the dot characters in this game at the current moment, when they come to the dot team, aren't able to fully function as much as they would have if they were to have Kafka or not. There are some exceptions. There are some characters that are able to re-trigger their dots. Something like Sampo on E4. I know Gwenaifen has it as well. Luka has it in his basic attack. But they're for themselves only, not for the other characters. We don't know at the current moment if Black Swan will be able to trigger her own Arcana um, before her turn. But looking at how Kafka is very heavily incentivized in that stream, how Kafka has been the main driver for the DOT team in a long time, you do have to make a very important decision and one that might lead you to having to wait for Black Swan even longer, which is probably something for Kafka right now. Her four stars aren't the best, but the value that Kafka gives to your account if you're looking forward to a DOT team is very important. And I mean very, very important. The fact that Kafka is already going to be giving you more arcana stacks when you end up using her skill because that is re-triggering the dots which I'm assuming is the reason why she's getting more arcana stacks and then for the fact that you will be doubling tripling the amount of damage your character would be doing by having Kafka being very speedy re-triggering it multiple times with their skill in her ultimate and this leads to a lot more damage you would have gotten without having to wait for your enemy's turn because if they end up getting their turn and say they one shot an enemy or one shot an ally they end up tanking it and it basically does nothing and they start going crazy on your team you could have basically killed that enemy if you had kafka on the team dealing that dot multiple times her own shock dot maybe even black swan's shock or not shock but black swan's wind shear when i fin's fire kiss having sampo's wind shear there's a lot of really crazy stuff that you can do with triggering so much dot damage with kafka with the other teammates that are in the dot team at the current moment i don't want people going into these banners looking for black swan saying I could use Black Swan and probably clear MLC without Kafka, I'll be fine. While you may be able to do it right now, they are always trying to figure out ways to nerf characters. And it doesn't matter what characters we're looking at. Something like how the Mars struck are with Sela. At that point, Sela is right now struggling because characters do have high HP. Characters are being able to res themselves, which doesn't count as a down for Sela. There's a lot of things that go with not having the right things in accordance to be able to have the right situation for your characters and looking at black swan looking at any dot character without kafka you're basically rocking a car with wheels but no steering wheel kafka isn't there to steer you where you want while you have the wheels you're just going straight but you can't take any turns that are necessary in order to make the right decision for your account 
and i don't want people summoning for black swan that aren't going to be investing in the dot team fully because you do need that leader sparkle in a way i do need to talk about in its own video because I feel like Sparkle as well has the potential of messing people up as well. Just because I feel like she's very niche in where she wants to be used. Although a lot of the things that she gives are very beneficial to a majority of the cast. I do think that a lot of the skill or support characters that are in the game do very well on their own already. And Sparkle really is a very luxury character in my honest opinion. I do want to talk about that more in another video. But other than that, I think that's going to be it for this video. We have just so many dot characters right now that rely on Kafka's reapplication because a lot of them are going to be able to do their own damage, are able to provide benefits to a lot of other dots, but can only re-trigger theirs. Like how we have Gwenaifen, Luka, Sampo, they can re-trigger theirs in their own means, but they do give a lot of benefits like the dot amplification from Sampo's ultimate, being able to use Luka's ultimate, having the damage multiplication, or not damage multiplication, but damage amplifier, having Gwenaifen with their fire kiss, being able to amplify damage as well. And then we have Kafka, who's here to re-trigger every single die in the game and can benefit from all of these buffs that Gwenaifen, Luka, Sampo are able to give. And then when we have Black Swan, who's also supporting this, also giving more damage over time as the battle goes on. And then Kafka is able to re-trigger, 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 re-trigger. You get so much more damage out of that and you don't have to worry if by the time the enemy takes their turn, are they going to be alive or are they going to be dead? When you have Kafka, you really don't have to worry about that. You kind of know when to expect certain things just because the way she be, she's able to re-trigger her dots, the way she's able to re-trigger other people's dots is just a very important thing. And I think a lot of people should be wary of understanding that if you don't have Kafka, you probably shouldn't be summoning for Black Swan. And I know some people kind of want the other and not get the other, which is get Black Swan, but not get Kafka. I just don't know at this point right now until we test her out, which I just feel like with how the character works and how the dot team works, if you're not rocking Kafka, you are doing yourself a very big disservice in basically investing in a dot team at all. So other than that, that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know if you have Kafka, if you're looking forward to getting Black Swan. Let me know if you're looking to get Black Swan, but don't want Kafka. I really want to hear the opinions in the comments below. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the next one and peace.